Most of us will recognize this as a union convention. But this is a special convention, being held in Gdansk, Poland. The first convention of the first free labor union behind the Iron Curtain. The Polish Union Solidarity. It was here in Gdansk, a little more than a year ago, that the incredible story of solidarity began. Tension between Polish workers and their communist rulers had been building during the summer of 1980 as a mismanaged economy produced shortages and high prices. Brief scattered walkouts throughout the country brought minor concessions and many promises, but no real gains. Poland seethed with labor unrest. When the government announced a sharp increase in meat prices, 16,000 workers at the Lenin shipyard in Gdansk rebelled. They locked the gates and went on strike, defying the government and risking a repetition of the bloody riots of 1970 that took place in this same shipyard. They were courageous and determined, but they also had no leader and no clear goals. They quickly got both. An electrician named Lech Walesa climbed a fence into the shipyard and joined the striking workers. For 17 tumultuous days, government officials issued threats while Russian divisions maneuvered on the border. But the light of freedom had been lit and strikes exploded all over the country. By the end of the first week, 300,000 workers had walked off the job. With the country paralyzed, Communist Party leaders went to the Lenin shipyard to negotiate with the workers. They were stunned by the major worker demand, something unheard of in a communist country, the right to form a free trade union. But finally, the communist team conceded. An agreement was signed. The workers could form an independent trade union. Outside in the shipyard, Workers cheered and thundered out the Polish national anthem as Lech Walesa announced the agreement. On that day, two legends were born, Solidarity and its leader, Lech Walesa. Who is this man, Lech Walesa? He's an intense, smiling man, a 38-year-old electrician who has been fired from three jobs because of union activism. He lives with his wife and six children in a two-room apartment. He is deeply religious, hates neckties, and with solidarity now numbering 10 million members, he carries a big stick. Walesa expressed the guiding philosophy of solidarity early this year when he visited Pope John Paul II and said, politics do not interest us. What interests us are the rights of man, the rights of society, and the rights of the faith. Rights, basic, universal human rights. Never in history have workers in a totalitarian state won so much. The right to form a free trade union and the right to strike. The right to a secret ballot, not only in union affairs, but in Poland's Communist Congress. The right of assembly and free expression. An easing of restrictions on religion and education. The right to publish their own newspaper and gain limited access to the media. In the short space of one year, solidarity has achieved one impossible goal after another, and the American labor movement has stood solidly behind them, providing moral support and much needed equipment. Lane Kirkland was invited to address Solidarity's first Congress in September, but Polish officials refused to permit the visit. His address was videotaped though and read to the delegates in Gdansk. The delegates to this Congress confront many difficult, even momentous questions. The FLCIO would not presume to advise you on the direction you should take. 
You alone understand the needs of Poland's workers. You alone are their authentic voice. Let Poland's history be made by Poles. To solidarity, to the workers of Poland, we pledge, in the words of an old American labor song, solidarity forever. Members of Solidarity know that Poland faces an uncertain future. A ruined economy must be rebuilt. New human rights must be won and secured. The country must survive. We are Poles first, Walesa has said, and then trade unionists. But if Poland's future is uncertain, Walesa at least knows there is no turning back. He has said, this is only the beginning of these changes. No one in Poland has any doubt that there is no way back. No way back. No retreat from the achievement of human rights. The AFL-CIO is proud to honor the historic accomplishments of solidarity and its lasting contribution to the freedom of the human spirit and the human rights of all. George Meany, through all his years, was one of the world's clearest voices for human rights. And in his name and memory, with fraternity and brotherhood, with respect and resolution, the AFL-CIO presents the first George Meany Human Rights Award to Solidarity and its 10 million members.